top story on Midday Edition. The decommissioning of the shuttered San Onofre nuclear power plant is continuing, even as controversies still rage over the storage of spent nuclear fuel. A regular quarterly meeting of the San Onofre Community Engagement Panel took place in Oceanside last night. The subject Southern California Edison presented was current practices in the transportation of used nuclear fuel. The problem is, it's still not known where, when, or if ever the spent fuel being buried behind a seawall at San Onofre will be moved. Joining me the severe nuclear accident was just missed by a quarter inch. You've got 40% of the cargo exports and Im imports for the country, 40% of the agriculture products for the country, and we're allowing incompetent companies like Southern California Edison and Holtec to determine our future. We don't want this nuclear waste buried at the beach, just above the water level, 100 feet from the ocean. Who thought of this? This is crazy. What are you going to do when one of these canisters fails? You just realize that they don't want those questions. They can't handle those questions. Public safety should be first. And I've been around nuclear for many years. It's not. Behind that gate, it's not. Right, the story has been changing since this explosion took place some four hours ago and, and the Prime Minister is saying that this combined with the earthquake is the most severe unprecedented crisis that Japan has faced. Experts are warning that radiation levels now are rising at the Fukushima nuclear plant and there is a high risk they are saying of a leak if the situation isn't resolved. They spoke of the hundreds and thousands of evacuees now headed away from those nuclear power reactors that have caused so much trouble. The line of cars stretched for miles, a race to get out of the danger zone. 200,000 people and counting, trying to get away from those battered nuclear reactors. This man said nuclear power is the most frightening thing, even more than a tsunami. The government, nobody tells us, the citizens, what is really happening. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. Fresh reports from the EPA and others in this country show traces of radiation from that Japanese plant have migrated across the Pacific Ocean, have now reached a total of 14 states here that we know of, including Florida and New York. If you look at the Fukushima disaster, which they say now will run up to about $500 billion, that disaster is 20% of the fallout from that disaster. And that was because that power plant sits on the coast with an offshore wind con prevailing wind condition. Here at San Onofre, it's the complete opposite. We have a prevailing westerly on the west coast, which means almost all of the fallout from a nuclear disaster would be traveling into Southern California's urbanized areas. Now, where do these radioactive materials come from? Well, there is a naturally occurring radioactive material in nature called uranium. The uranium is very special because it was discovered in 1939 that you could split the uranium atom and release an enormous amount of energy. All nuclear weapons are based on uranium. But when this uranium is used in a nuclear reactor, it is split in hundreds of different ways. It's a violent process triggered by neutrons that are flying around. I have a list of 211 different radioactive materials which are produced at every nuclear reactor, and that's not a complete list. The difficulty with radioactive materials is the atoms are unstable. They're like little time bombs, and they explode without warning. And if they explode inside your body, they damage the cells, and they damage in particular the DNA molecules, and that can cause cancer because the cells begin to reproduce abnormally. And the same thing happens with uh, reproductive cells. If your reproductive cells, the eggs or sperm, are damaged, then you can pass this on to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And so generations hence, 
people can be suffering from consequences of a radiation exposure today. This stuff remains dangerous for literally millions of years. We created something that will haunt not just human lives, but all other species as well um, for a period that is incomprehensible. I mean, I have trouble imagining a human lifespan, which, you know, is tiny, 70, 80 years. We're talking about half a million years. Waste that is toxic. And plutonium is dangerous for, has a half-life of 24,000 years. That means in 24,000 years, there's still half of it. In 48,000 years, there's still a quarter of it. We measure dangerous periods in generally 10 to 20 half-lives. So that's about half a million years. But it doesn't disappear. It turns into a brand new substance, which is called uranium-235, which has a 700 million year half-life. So uh, this is a very perplexing problem. ご実報の時間をいただいてますので、私は2011年3月11日から特に最初の1週間経験したことを少しお話をさせていただきたいと思います。3.11の14時46分私のいた国会も大きく揺れました。原発については最初に入ってきた情報はスクラムによって無事に全ての原発が停止したという情報でしたそれを聞いた時にはホッとしました。しかしそれから約1時間後に来た情報は福島第一サイトで全ての電源が喪失したという情報でした。この電源喪失と冷却機能が停止ということが何を意味するかでそのさらに20分後に全ての冷却機能が停止をしたという情報が入りました現在16万人の皆さんが福島原発事故のために避難をしています 私は3.11の原発事故が起きるまでは安全性に注意して原子力発電所を利用するということに賛成をしておりましたしかしこの3.11の事故に遭遇してからは考え方を180度変えましたしかし一つの事故で日本の例で言えば国土の3分の1の地域から逃げていくあるいは人口の40%がその場所から逃げるそのことが必要となる事故というのは戦争の時はありえない事故だと思っていますそう考えるとこのリスクの大きさに対して、そうしたリスクを100% リスクを回避できる方法というのはそれは原発を使わないでもいい社会を作るそのことです After 45 years, the San Onofre nuclear plant is shutting down for good to clear out the uncertainty and move forward in a decisive way, uh, as well as uh, reduce the drag that uh, was continuing, uh, the economic drag from having the plant, we decided to uh, no longer seek restart uh, and close the plant. If you take Edison on their word, then you'd also have to be deeply insulted by their assertion that they made that decision based on economic grounds. So in other words, my children's safety meant nothing to them. That all the issues that were being raised meant nothing to them, that it was an economic bottom line. And so my thought there is, um, Edison didn't learn a single lesson from Fukushima. This has ramifications around the country. This is a seismic event in the nuclear industry. There was nothing one particular person or 
group did. It was the culmination of people coming together. I hope we're a good example to other people in our situation. I got this letter uh, from Mr. Khan just uh, shortly after the decision, Edison's decision to shut down San Onofre. I'll just read it to you here. It's, um, it says, Dear Mr. Johnson, I appreciate what you did for me while I was staying in California the other day. Thanks to you and Southern Californians, I was able to exchange meaningful opinions with Mr. Yasko, Mr. Bradford, Mr. Gunderson, and also strongly feel that Southern Californians were enthusiastic about the abolition of nuclear power plants. The news that the nuclear power plant in San Onofre would be abolished was reported right after I came back to Japan. It was the result that your persistent activities bore fruit. I am happy to have been involved in, that co in the course of that. I would like you to help me make networks to abandon nuclear power plants, not only in the USA and Japan, but all over the world. I am looking forward to seeing you again. Yours sincerely, Naoto Khan. Then I got a call that morning from the LA Times. I wanted to get my take on the shutdown. This is just the beginning. And I immediately just said, I'm glad it's shut down, but now we got to deal with the waste. There's no way in the world that we are going to allow this nuclear power plant to become a nuclear waste dump for 200 years. Thank you. San Onofre syndrome will be fixed, but we have to fix it here first.